Towards the end of this video, I'll be talking about the precautions that we need to observe when we are dealing with potentiometer circuits. But before we get to, to get into that, we'll be exploring how we compare two EMFs using a potentiometer circuit coming up. Now, when comparing two EMFs using a potentiometer, we can use this kind of circuit the way it is, the way I have drawn it. Now, the EMF of two cells uh, can be compared using a circuit where we have, of course, the driver cell right there. We have switch K1 right there. We have switch K2. We have, of course, um, uh, this switch S. Of course, this switch, this is where we are going to be putting S, position 1, then position 2. When we put it on position 1, it means that we have rendered this lower part redundant and it is only this cell that is in the circuit. When we put this switch S on position 2, it means that we have remain, rendered this upper bit, this part of the circuit redundant and it's only this that is actively in the circuit. Now, E is a cell whose EMF is not known. E0 is a cell whose EMF is known. And this is what we are calling the standard cell. A standard cell is a cell whose EMF is known. We have right here a resistor we've called P. It is a protective resistor that we have connected in series with the galvanometer. And we protect, we connect this protective resistor in series with the galvanometer so that we protect this galvanometer from excessive current. Now, of course, uh, when throw the, the procedures of our experiment will reveal that first we first obtain the balance point when the protective resistor is in the circuit. So when we get the balance point when the protective resistor is in the circuit, that balance point we will have achieved is just an approximate one. Then we will go ahead and get the accurate balance point by removing this protective resistor out of the circuit. We remove it out of the circuit by simply closing switch K2. Of course, when we close switch K2, it means that any current that is flowing through here will, be, will bypass this resistor like that into the galvanometer and then we will obtain the balance point and after obtaining the balance point that balance point we will have obtained will be the accurate one and that is what we will be taking this protective resistor just protects this galvanometer from excessive current so to begin with our experiment first of all we are going to close our switch k1 and we put this portion or this switch s to position one so after putting switch S to position 1 and switch K1, we slide our jockey or we tap it along this wire the, until we obtain an approximate balance point. We call it an approximate balance point because this protective resistor now is in the circuit. So after getting our approximate balance point, that is when the government is not deflecting. We then close switch K2 so that we remove this protective resistor out of the circuit. And then again, we, we slide this galvanometer i mean we slide this jockey along the, the the wire until we get the accurate balance point so when we get the accurate balance point that is at the point when the galvanometer is not deflecting we then go ahead and get uh, the balance length which we shall call l naught since it is corresponding to e naught the standard cell and definitely we will go ahead and write our equation that at balance that uh, this EMF E0 is going to be equivalent to the potential difference across the balance length. And since we, the, 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 and that will be the, the, the balance length L0 times the PD per unit length. And this is what exactly we are talking about. When we first obtain the balance point, E0 is going to be equal to the PD per unit length times L0. That is our first equation, equation one. So after getting our first equation, we are going to repeat the same procedure again. This time round, we shall get our our switch S connected to position 2. When we connect it to position 2 with switch K2 open and switch K1 closed, we shall tap our jockey along this wire and then we shall get an approximate balance point. Then thereafter, we shall close K2 and then we shall slide our wire along our jockey along this wire and then we shall get the accurate balance point. Then we get the accurate balance point we shall read and record the accurate balance length let's call it l then of course when we get our accurate balance point l we know that the pd per unit length times that balance length is going to give us be equivalent to the emf or the potential difference across that cell and so we will be able to compose or write our second equation in that right so it will be that e 
which is in the secondary circuit, it's going to be equal to the PD per unit length times the balance length L, the accurate one. And of course, after getting our two equations, we compare them. We now have two equations. We have our first equation right there, and we have our second equation. So since this, this is about comparing two EMFs, so we shall divide, we shall get equation two, divide that by equation one, and we will get an expression that will enable us to compare the EMFs of the two cells. And this is exactly what has been done here. Equation 2 divided by equation 1 gives us E over E0 is equal to KL over KL. Now since the PD per unit length is the same, because we are dealing with the same wire, it means these values of K will cancel out. Then we shall end up with an expression that E over E0 is going to be equal to L over L0. And from this expression, we are able to compare the EMF of the two cells. Now, of course, the EMF of E, the cell, is not known, but we know E0 is a standard one. So in case we wanted to find the EMF of this cell E, it's a matter of making this the subject of the formula, and we shall make this the subject of the formula like that, that E is going to be L over L0, multiply that by E. And there we're able to get the EMF of the unknown. First of all, when you connect your potentiometer circuit and you're, you're, you're currently not using the potentiometer and you're not taking any readings, it is always advisable that you always leave your switches open. You should only close your switches, for example, this kind of switch, you should only close them only and only when you are measuring or when you are actually using the potentiometer to measure something. Otherwise, if you're not using the potentiometer, you're not taking any readings and you just close, you leave your switches closed, they'll be draining the cell and when they drain the cell you won't be able to get accurate results in the forthcoming readings or measurements you'll be making. So it's always advisable that you always open the switches when the measurements are not being taken to avoid draining the cell. Also you need to ensure correct polarity of cells. That is for example you look at this driver cell and this driver cell the positive the, the, the positive terminal is always connected to the positive terminal in the secondary circuit at that point. That's the correct way to connect them. And the negative connects with the negative here from at the jockey right there. This is exactly how it has been done even with this diagram, that the positive polarities are connecting at point A and the negative polarities right there, they are connecting at point J. So uh, you are supposed to ensure that the polarity is correct in terms of its connection connectivity. Otherwise, if you do not connect these polarities the correct way, you won't be able to obtain the correct balance point. Now, uh, also the driver cell current should be the kind of current that should be able to maintain uh, a constant amount of current for a long period of time so that you're able to have a st stability of results. Now again, the driver cell, still speaking about the driver cell, the driver cell should not be so big so as not to overheat the potentiometer wire. It is always advisable also to always put the protective galvanometer or two. It is always advisable also to protect the galvanometer from excess current by putting a protective resistor in series with it. Now the potential difference of the driver cell should be greater than the potential difference of the cells in the secondary circuit. Otherwise, there won't be a balance point. This potential difference should be higher than this. And also, as you're trying to slide this jockey along the wire, avoid sliding this while the jockey is in contact with the wire because you will end up scraping off part of this wire. And when you scrape off part of that wire, it means you're going to make this slide wire non-uniform. It is important that this wire is having a constant cross-sectional area all through to be able to get accurate results. If you keep sliding this jockey while it's in contact with this wire, it will end up scrap it will end up scrapping off some portions of this wire and as a result that will distort the uniformity of this slide wire and when the uniformity of the slide wire is distorted it means that the results you'll be getting won't be accurate or they
This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Ksembo Academy, this is Anwar Brangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.